Uh, good evening. As I was introduced, my name is Brian Rodriguez. Uh, I'm with the San Mateo County Sheriff's Office, but I'm assigned full-time to the Northern California Regional Intelligence Center in San Francisco, NCRIC, or kind of NICRC conversationally. Uh, one quick, quick slide about who we are. Um, one big lesson that came after 2001 was um, the government really saw some room for improvement when it came to collaboration and cooperation among kind of local police departments and sheriff's agencies. And so that's where kind of the idea of this Fusion Center was born, that we <coughs> promote those partnerships and encourage uh, the local agencies to work together. And so to accomplish that, uh, we are staffed by representatives from all the local agencies, Oakland, San Francisco, Marin, Alameda County, Contra Costa. Like I said, I'm from San Mateo. We all come together, we share our strengths, we talk about our deficiencies, and try to really solve problems from an entire uh, regional Bay Area perspective. Um, one tool that's become really popular within the Bay Area, including uh, most of the major cities and all the sheriff's departments, is use of automated license plate readers. As was covered previously, um, this really automates processes that were previously done manually, uh, making them more effective, more efficient, and non-discriminatory in that process. Uh, the two primary cases where they assist law enforcement, um, the first is that instant feedback alert when the LPR scans a plate that comes back as stolen, comes back as an amber alert, comes back as a stolen plate. The officer is able to corroborate that information among collets, call dispatch, uh, verify the accuracy, and then um, potentially pursue the vehicle, make an arrest, recover the vehicle right there on the spot. Um, secondly, the archived historical information um, has investigative uses as well. Um, um, we mentioned a topic before of the uh, uh, commercial burglaries that had a similar MO. We were able to canvas those crime scenes, find plates in common, and get that information out. Uh, we can locate suspects. Uh, we have partial and complete vehicle descriptions. Uh, those can be used to cross-reference against the LPR imagery and complete that vehicle description, complete that partial plate. Um, got a few stats and success stories. Up in Marin County, where LPR is used extensively, um, last year in 2013, they recovered about 340 of 380 stolen vehicles. That's almost a 90% recovery rate. The California average is closer to 60, and it's closer to 50% uh, nationally. So that, that's really impressive up there. Um, Piedmont um, made an extensive investment in LPR within the last few months. Since they've deployed the system, they've seen an increase, um, not just in their stolen recovery, but especially um, in their what they call rolling recoveries, right? They're getting these vehicles with the bad guys still inside, and not just after they've been abandoned on the side of the road. Um, additionally, they've seen a 20% reduction in the burglary and in their larceny. Um, and if you'll permit me to be a little bit speculative, um, you know, commonly the reason a vehicle is stolen is so the perpetrator can then use that to commit another crime. And so if we're able to stop that vehicle and recover it, potentially um, you're getting some preemptive reduction in crime um, following suit. Looking at historical data, um, there was a great case out of Daly City where um, they had a hit and run on a child. All they had was a partial plate and vehicle description. Ran that through the LPR to see what potential matches they had in the area on that time. It wasn't the first, it wasn't the second, but the third door they knocked on. Sure enough, they found their driver. If I'm one of those first two people, I'm probably a little annoyed and maybe a little scared, but I think in the end, the trade-off, you know, it's worth it to, to make that case. Um, we had a situation with a sex predator in San Francisco that was potentially a danger to children. We were able to run that against the LPR, found the individual had been parking and frequenting near parks and playgrounds, and then they were able to pursue that and make an arrest, violating the terms of his release. Um, and lastly, there was a multiple murder uh, cold case kind of out of the peninsula where uh, ALPR historical data was used to defeat what was a fictitious alibi. Uh, again, just some examples, and there'll be a lot more to come as this technology is adopted more throughout the Bay Area and we see more collaboration and cooperation, like that previous story between uh, San Leandro and Alameda, that as we work together, it really multiplies the effectiveness of this tool. Um, but as also was said, like any law enforcement tool, you, know, you have to weigh the good against the uh, potential for harm and the risk that it brings if it's misused or, or not used properly. You know, every resource, every system that police departments have, um, you know, the computer systems, their weapon, their vehicle, their armor, um, even facial hair, there are rules, there are punishments, there are regulations um, if you don't follow those. And so the same thing applies to license plate readers, and it's great to see Alameda getting out ahead of that, whereas um, a lot of other jurisdictions may have adopted this tool and turned it up without having any paperwork in place beforehand. So. They're really doing this right by taking all those concerns to heart and having the paperwork there in place ahead of time. So the NICRC is here to assist that, just kind of give them a head start or give them a sounding board in terms of how you can more effectively utilize the data through sharing with your local partners. Um, so you know, if we have uh, a stolen vehicle in Oakland and it shows up in Alameda, we'll be able to get that alert and notify both agencies. 
or vice versa. If, if there's an abduction or an Amber Alert here in Alameda, and then that plate is seen in Oakland, San Francisco, San Jose, we'll be able to get the notification out and make a stop. Um, and then to assist with development of the privacy policies, the restrictions, and really besides just the human procedural element to be able to put controls uh, within the system that really protects and archives out that data unless you truly have a legitimate law enforcement purpose to open it up and, and go back through it. Um, in, in the interest of time, really these are the three most common privacy questions and concerns that come up from uh, the ACLU and the general public in terms of who's working with the data, what are they doing for it, and, and how long does it exist in the system. Um, so the practices that the NICRIC is putting in place is we're keeping it entirely law enforcement through and through. Um, only given to law enforcement. Every user is individually vetted. They must have a justified law enforcement purpose and an active case to access any archive or, or retain data. Uh, we don't share with the private sector. We don't sell to. There's no tow companies, no skip tracers, nothing. Just law enforcement for law enforcement purposes. And, and again, um, all audit, all use, every login is all audited so we can turn that over to the agencies. They can verify um, you know, that the activity is proper and, and in line with you know, the wishes of their chief, their city council, their citizens. Mm -hmm. Lastly, how long is data retained? Uh, this is probably the hardest question to answer. Um, in California, there are no laws or rules that would apply to uh, a police department, a sheriff's department, or even a, a private company about how long you can retain LPR data or, or what you can do with it. Um, some other states, uh, Vermont, they have rules that uh, provide them with 18 months. New Jersey, it's five years. New Hampshire, they can't keep the data at all. And in Maine, it's only 21 days. So uh, given this kind of flexibility, most California agencies um, are actually going with 24 months. Um, here in the Bay Area, NICRIC partners, we're trying to line everybody at 12. But um, if you look over in Contra Costa County, Santa Clara County, um, Los Angeles, and most of Southern California, they're sticking with two years. And that's uh, citing government code 34090, which basically says law enforcement can't delete anything uh, within less than two years. And that's to protect evidence, protect um, police procedures for audit, for discovery, for transparency. Um, the CHP is one notable exception. They were recently limited to um, what I feel is an overly strict 60-day retention. Um, where did 12 months come from? Well, like I said, in the absence of clear um, laws, rules, regulations pertaining to LPR, we're just kind of borrowing from uh, similar things that are in place. Um, so the California Attorney General has guidelines about data that is not criminal intelligence, and you're only allowed to keep that for one year, at which point it has to be purged. <coughs> Going back to 34090, subsection 6 has an exception for routine video surveillance or video imaging, which kind of sounds like LPR. It's a camera, they're video images. So again, you see the 12 month come up there. Um, and so we chosen to use that going forward until, of course, some kind of law is passed or the AG follows up. And whatever specific laws are passed specific to ALPR, of course, we'll follow up. But in the meantime, this is kind of the position we're taking. Uh, lastly, other things pertaining to the California Highway Patrol, um, we adopt their policy of, of not selling with or sharing to the private sector, and then, of course, monitoring all use and auditing um, and tracking it all. Uh, there's my contact information. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, also, the privacy officer emails up there. Uh, that's not me. He is a lawyer, unlike myself. So probably book him first. But uh, thank you for your time tonight.